Pearl Build Night, we present to you a reading of the English translation of the intro song from Gundam Wing entitled Just Communication. <clears throat> Just wild beat communication while being pounded by the rain. I want to express this unfading passion with my entire body tonight. I held your damp shoulders to warm you. Your fingers tremble. What are they seeking? Even if it's in broken speech, I want you to tell me your pain. Pretending that the pain's worn off doesn't make you an adult. I want to protect that look in your eyes. Believe in the love that can change sadness to strength. Just wild beat communication. Don't be afraid of anything because no one's going to take away our shared feelings of now. Just wild beat communication. While being pounded by the rain, I want to express this unfading passion with my entire body tonight. I want to spend the night nestled close to you until the faraway dawn. We can lose everything else as long as we don't lose tenderness. Through kisses more than words, we feel each other's heartbeats, drawing passion near, momentary, yet eternal. I want to gaze at you painfully, intensely. You're so precious to me, it almost brings me to tears. Just wild beat communication. Don't surrender anything, because when you have someone who understands you, you can fight on. Just wild beat communication. Don't let go of love. Unleash all the complexities of your heart and show me your true self, overflowing and passionate tonight. Now here's the man who enjoys being pounded by the rain, Jay Hunger. I, Travis, I want to gaze at you painfully. <laughs> wow. At, that, any that time. Is <laughs> yeah, that so that's a show about large battling robots, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Are we sure Travis. it's not out of a romance novel? I don't understand Japanese anime, guys. Never <laughs> have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're back with a special uh, episode here. Uh, I I wanted to uh, take a moment and just kind of hang out with uh, some friends and uh, build some robots. Uh, so during this pandemic, one of the big rushes besides toilet paper is people are buying the hell out of Gundam. So um, I'm actually one of those. I've been buying the hell out of some Gundam. Um, so I wanted to take uh, take this moment to just hang out with some friends, talk Gundam, build a little bit, and uh, let you guys just painfully watch us as Travis does his beat poetry. Um, so with us tonight, we have Travis. Okay, and we have Jason. How's it going? All right, and with us tonight, we got my buddy uh, John. Hey. All right, so uh, we are going to uh, go for about an hour or so, give or take. Uh, we're going to take some time and just build our Gundam. So, uh, talk a little bit about it as well. So, before we really jump into that, um, let's talk about what we're going to build tonight. So, um, Jason, what are you building tonight? There you go. So, that's, uh, what is that? It's an RG. It's Johnny Ridden's Zaku 2. It's custom. Right. So, right. for those not familiar, um, one of the armies in the Gundam series, they pilot the Zaku suits. Um, they tend to be the bad guys. Uh, I just like the design of the suits, so... Uh, plus, I'm a huge fan of Char, as you can see the uh, portrait there. All right, all right, uh, John. What are you building tonight? Uh, tonight, I am working on the Gundam H2 Magnum from Gundam Build Divers. Nice. Is that upside down? It is upside down. Good times. <laughs> so, that's what I'm working on. All right, excellent. Uh, Travis, what are you going to be working on? Uh, I'm going to work on a Sergeant Frog kit by Bandai. Um, nice. <laughs> it's got a bunch of little guys in it, but it should be a, a quick build, and these guys crack me up, so we'll give that a shot tonight. All right, got to love uh, frogs and Gundams. So, and I am building the Gundam 00 Sky from uh, Build Fighters. Build Divers, sorry, Build Divers. So, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it, and... Uh, as we go along, I'm going to be annoying these guys with questions, and uh, I'm going to see if I can catch them when they're using the exacto knife. Maybe they'll cut off a finger or something. So, um, me personally, 
I got involved in Gundam while we were actually uh, recording our uh, Monarch Legeeky podcast. Travis said, hey, why don't you give it a shot? I was like, oh, no, I won't like it. No, nah, it'll be fine, he says. Just try one, he says. So in about 60 models later, give or take, in the span of what, about, I don't know, 10 years maybe? That sound about right, Travis? About 10 years? When did we start recording? Like, uh, see, it was after my first kid was born, after I moved. So probably about 2010. So yeah, it's probably been about 10 years for you. Okay. So, and I, I would go through uh, fits where I'd buy a bunch at one time, and then I'd go, you know, a year or two without buying any, just because I had backlog to work off of. Um, but I'm back on it. Um, with this pandemic going on, I've had plenty of time to uh, kind of rekindle my interest in the hobby. And um, so I've been buying some high grades. I've been buying some real grades, a couple perfect grades, master grades, all the grades. Um, and unfortunately, I think my wife has given me a grade of F. Um, <laughs> wow. So, but uh, it, it's a good time. So uh, let's, let's turn to you guys. Uh, Travis, when yeah. did you get interested in the hobby? And uh, what kind of, what was your background? And what, when did you? Um, you know, I, as a kid, I, I did a lot of model building, uh, you know, cars and planes and boats, you know, stuff. Uh, uh, my father or grandfather got me. And I remember getting uh, like Star Wars and even some of those old toys, even G.I. Joe. You know, one of my favorite things used to be getting a new vehicle and putting it together, putting the stickers on. Um, I always enjoyed that. Uh, Gundam, uh, ironically or not ironically, uh, started with Gundam Wing. When that, that came out on Cartoon Network, that was kind of my first exposure to any Japanese robots outside of like uh, Voltron or Transformers or Macross. Um, and I thought it was really cool. And then they had some, uh, I guess what we'd call HG sets that they, they sold at like Target and Walmart. And I picked up a couple of those. And man, I really thought that was fun. And uh, Zoids came out uh, about the same time. And they had Zoid kits on the shelf. So between Gundam Wing and Zoids, that kind of fired that up. And then I started discovering uh, uh, import sites like HLJ and saw all these really awesome Gundam kits that they had and said, oh, cool, let's, let's jump down there. And so I did a few of those and liked them. And then I knew Jay was out there. We were, I guess that was on the old Joe Battle Lines chat. We used to talk uh, quite right. a bit. Right. And then uh, maybe that's where we first started talking Gundam. All right. Hey, Jason, when did you start? What was your interest in it all? Um, so I built bottle kits growing up. Uh, everything from cars to warplanes to sci-fi stuff. I even built a Millennium Falcon when I was in high school. Uh, started to build a Slave 1 and didn't finish it. And I kind of quit doing it for a long time. And G.I. Joe's were like Travis said, that the vehicles always seemed like a model kit in a way. Um, they came unassembled. You had to assemble them. Uh, we were doing the podcast and in our discussions y'all were talking about them. I said, well, let me we order some and I've been doing them since occasionally. I don't order as many as I used to um, and I don't do them as often as I used to. I just don't have the time. But yeah. Okay. Uh, John, what about you? For me, I was in high school when Gundam Wings started airing on Cartoon Network. So that was my first introduction to Gundam, was just watching it on Cartoon Network. And like Travis, I mean, the first kits I purchased were at Walmart, Target, um, Hobby Lobby, places like that where they just had them around. And I've pretty much been hooked ever since. You know, that's funny. I, I never remember seeing the kits in like the major stores here. I do remember seeing some of the action figures that came around. Uh, yeah. Was it early 2000s? Yeah, I remember pick, picking up a few of those at a Kmart once. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they were out the same time that the G.I. Joe 2 packs were out, the Real American Hero stuff. Right. I remember getting those at the same time for whatever odd reason. And, you know, we didn't have cable growing up because we lived out in boondocks. So I, I had no idea what this was. It really made no sense to me other than they looked like robots from something i don't know it was weird so i was just like eh, I'll, I'll pass on the action figures they still don't make sense to me well no no uh we we were actually talking uh pre-show me and john we uh we kind of uh 
head mute anything that's not robot fighting. And when the robot fighting starts, then we kind of start paying attention. <laughs> you know, if, I, if I'm honest, I still don't think I've seen more than an entire episode of a couple, a couple Gundam shows. I just, the cartoon never did much for me, but man, I love me some Japanese robots. <laughs> for sure. For sure. All right. Um, so, you know, John mentioned wing. Um, if you guys, do you guys have a favorite uh, line of Gundam? Gundam has a million different uh, lines proper, um, but there's what Universal Sentry, then there's the Bill Divers, uh, whatever Seed is a part of, because Seed is its own little thing. And there's several other different kind of, I don't know, timelines. Is there a uh, particular uh, favorite of yours, Travis? Uh, I, I probably go back to Wing. Um, you know, for me, I the standard Gundam Mark II or whatever is kind of the most popular one is okay, but I like variety Yeah, in, in the robots. And Wing, you had all the, you know, the, what was there, five or six of the main robots that were each kind of specialized, had their own weapon, had their own color scheme. Uh, while they had the same base look, they were all unique and different. And uh, so I usually go back to that. Other than that, like I said, I, as far as story and and that goes, I have no clue. You know, I <laughs> I, I kind of know stuff, but with me with Gundam, it's very much that one looks really cool. Like I like the crossbones of Gundam because he looks like a pirate, and I don't even know is it Shinanju? Is that the samurai looking one? Uh, yeah, it's from use from Unicorn. Is Shinanju this one? So that one. Uh, may, may, oh, I actually got whatever this guy is. I always just oh, call no, him Gundam. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, but I just, you know, if it's unique, it's different, it looks cool. You know, that's what I went for. So Wing was a big one. I love the Heavy Arms design. I love the uh, uh, Hell Scythe and Sandrock. Those are those are probably three of my favorites all time. Uh, Jason, do you have a particular uh, favorite? Uh, I like the UC. I watched nearly all of it and enjoyed it. I think I did see some of the original Gundam on TV when I was growing up, um, but it wasn't something that I got into until I started building the kits. And then uh, when I was going through nursing school, when I had spare time between classes and stuff, when I wouldn't study, and I would sit down and watch an episode or two. And I, I got through pretty much all the original series, Zeta and um, Unicorn probably in a semester and then uh there's some episodes that kind of fast forward it because it's kind of eh, right one reason or another but no i like the uc i like the design of the, the bots i know people say they're kind of plain now but i kind of like the simplicity right uh john you mentioned wing earlier is that uh, uh is that what you're sticking with for favorites uh, if we're gonna go with mobile suit designs probably but as far as storyline goes definitely not yeah i paid attention to pretty much all of them that I've watched and I mean Universal Century probably has the best storylines out of the bunch but their mobile suit designs just aren't as good to me anyway yeah uh, though I have to say that my favorite mobile suit is the uh, custom goof from 08 the mess team so there's okay. at least a good design out of that series all right for me uh, it was just a matter of uh, the first uh, kit that I bought was the blitz from seed so i figured i'd track down the seed series just to see if i find out more about it and uh i just kind of got drawn in i really love the uh strike um oh perfect strike the different things that you can do with it yeah um but that's really what uh kind of drove me and of all the gundam models that i have the majority are from the seed universe um i've got so many strike uh kits uh just different kinds i've actually got a, a couple uh perfect grades of them just because they released a standard uh strike and then they released a perfect strike which was uh financially genius for them because they're stupid <laughs> people like me that'll buy both of them um, is, by the way, people are watching. Um, this is a very, very dull exacto. Like it's, it's just for shaving. Like it's almost butter knife dull. So, 
So when you always use an exacto to spit thumb, you know, I keep a sharp, really, really sharp one and a really, really dull one for different purposes. <laughs> All right. So is the strike noir? Is that a variation of Gundam strike? Yeah. So um, with the seed uh, universe, I guess there's tons of, uh, it's not anime, but it, it's like manga. I guess, and a lot of these uh, suits are pulled from that. I, I know they did an Astray line of manga, which the Astray is one of the suits in Seed. It, it's also a favorite of mine as well. Um, so it's just a way for them to... I think Seed is one of the um, lines that's gotten the most uh, bang for the buck in terms of different suits um, just with all the manga and stuff that they have there. Whereas usually a proper uh, line will go, what, a couple years, few years, and then they'll move on to the next big thing, which right now I think is uh, the uh, Bill Divers and uh, the Iron-Blooded Orphans, which they just uh, finished up too. Yeah, that that one had the bear Gundams, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So... It was cool. So Iron Blooded Orphans, they had HGs that had frames. They were frame builds, which an HG typically it's kind of like a shell build, except for the joints, right? Um, so that was Bar coming, Barbados or something like that. Barbados, yeah, yeah. So and then there's one guy that I I thought looked like like a frog or a bear or something like that, big green, yeah, uh, beefy guy. I love that guy. That was a fun build. I would build all kinds of him. Yeah, he's just like a – he was a chunky-looking robot, yeah. right? Yeah, he's yeah. fluffy. So, um, but apparently, I mean, that that one's still pretty popular with people. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I think people are really digging – there's a master grade out for uh, Barbados, and I think that's one of the better master grades from what people have been saying. Yeah, I've actually been trying to get a hold of one of those, and they're sold out pretty much everywhere. Uh, well, you mentioned that. So wh where do you guys usually get your uh, kits from? Um, John, where do you usually get your kits from? Well, for me, it's a mixture. It really depends on what I'm trying to get a hold of, um, what else I'm trying to buy at the time, and who has it the cheapest. So yeah. I gone to Amazon. I've gone to BigBadToyStore.com. I've made some of my larger purchases of smaller kits through HLJ just because as long as you keep the size of the kits to a minimum, the shipping's not too bad. But And then just a few other places. Um, I did some orders from an import store called Anime Export when I was trying to get some of the, um, the Bandai Hobby exclusives before Bluefin was bringing those over. Right. So it it just really depends on what I'm after. Uh, Jason, where do you usually get yours at? Um, usually I go for a particular kit. So um, it's kind of like whoever has whoever has it available. I'm gonna want it, which I'm pretty patient with because I'm not in a hurry to get one. And then whichever is cost effective. I haven't bought from HLJ in forever, uh, mostly because whenever I don't really buy a kit until I'm ready to build it, and I'm a little impatient with shipping. So nine times out of ten, it's Amazon. Uh, if it's not Amazon, then I go to our local comic shop and uh, grab it from there. Now, Travis, what about you? Uh, whoever's got a clearance going. <laughs> uh, and, no, it'd be HLJ was the big one in the beginning. I think I went there a lot. Um, and then is it Gundam USA store or something like that? USA Gundam store. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. That was one I got quite a few from, um, but honestly like Amazon and Barnes and Noble now they carry a pretty, uh, uh, okay selection. And if you watch, they have good sales every now and then. Yeah. Um, I know, I think Barnes and Noble started carrying them like last year, maybe uh, a couple yeah, years, years ago. ago. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, pretty much whenever Bluefin started distributing for Bandai over here. 
Yeah. And usually uh, with Barnes and Noble, it's the latest and greatest models that they just put out. So you're not going to see a lot of the um, back inventory pop up. Usually it's within the last year, a few months or so uh, is what you'll see at Barnes and Noble, but it's still nice to see um, if you happen to be there, if you happen to be local to a Barnes and Noble, if you want to pick one up. Um, but yeah, here recently I've been kind of uh, testing the market with other uh, online retail, uh, retailers uh, like USA Gun in the Store. I'd never been before, but I'd made a purchase from them a few weeks ago. They were pretty quick. Um, a new place called MeccaWarehouse.com. I made a couple purchases through them. And uh, New Type HQ. Um, so there, there's a handful of online retailers, but when I first started jumping into it, um, I went to Hobbytown, USA, and they had a huge uh, inventory of just random Gundam models. And uh, like I said, I, I picked one up, and it was history after that. Um, so do you find yourselves... Uh, Jason, you said you're pretty specific in what you're looking for in terms of what you buy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Travis, you're a little... Kind Whatever of catches my eye. Right, right, yeah. right. So, John, do you kind of fall under that, or is that, are you, do you go after specific ones? or? For me, it's usually whatever I like when I see it in one of the shows, which is why I have an abundance of the Gundam Build Fighters kits, just because... Yeah. They all look so cool during the fights that I kind of want to have it on my shelf after that. And that's why I've gotten a few from the Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise series. And I wish I would have bought some more before all the kits started drying up online. But Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of surreal how I, I won't lie, when I when I was just buying them randomly before the big pandemic hit, um, I'd buy them from Amazon because I'd usually get it in a day or two and the price is pretty reasonable if not cheaper than anybody else. Um, mm -hmm. But to see uh, Amazon's inventory pretty much dried up was kind of surreal. Yeah. Um, and then you'll get the, uh, the personal sellers have some of these kits and just jack up the prices. Like one of the ones I'm looking for now is uh, a master grade from Seed. That's usually around thirty-five bucks or so. Mm -hmm. But uh, sellers have been having it for like ninety-five to a hundred on Amazon just because they can. Yeah, and it's just kind of surreal. Do you guys have a particular uh, favorite that you've built? One that kind of sticks with you. One that you just enjoyed right here is so that the uh, master grade right it's the 3.0 rx78 master grade um while it's kind of basic looking the amount of engineering that went into this guy and the the time it took for me to build him was uh a little bit longer than most of the other kits it was very time consuming I think it took me a couple weeks and multiple sessions sitting down, building part by part. Uh, never have I seen joints in any other Gundam like this one. It's pretty unreal. And uh, he holds up pretty well to most Gundams. If I start trying to pose them and move them, you got parts and armor pieces popping off, but not with him. Nothing comes off. Uh, in fact, if I did that, to it, any of these RGs right here, I'd be losing parts already. And even some of the other Master Grades. So he's almost um, an action figure. Um, so yeah, I definitely, if somebody, if you're gonna spend a little bit of more money on it than you would a normal one, and if you don't mind the basic look of it, which, you know, this is the, the guy where it all started, um, I highly recommend this kit. And the, the cool thing about it is, is he actually, he actually comes in half, and he's got the little jet that's inside of him. Fighters, man. Yeah. 
So he's got a little jet that's inside of him. So does that cockpit open too? The cockpit? Um, uh, yeah. Nice. So yeah, it sort of opens. Anyway, it's a good build, so I recommend it. Uh, does it have the? Uh... Second, it would be the, the Zaku to the MG. It was also a really good build, and I can also pose that around quite a bit and not have armor pieces falling off of them. John, do you have a uh, particular favorite, anything that's kind of stuck with you? Probably my favorite build that I've done was the master grade of the Build Strike full package from Gundam Build Fighters. Okay, yeah, I, I have that one. Yep. Did you get the, um, the star add-on pack that goes I with it? I did not. I did not. It's so nice. And it has all these extra pieces that you can use as effect parts. To, it's all clear translucent plastic that just makes it look like he can actually do the things that he does in a show. Nice. And it was a really fun build. In fact, now that I think about it, most of the strikes that I've done over the years, they always seem to be pretty solid. Yeah, the strike kit I built, I built the, uh, the L-Strike. It was yeah. pretty good. It even came with a stand, like a launcher stand. Yeah. Um, sadly, I didn't. I'm currently purging through things, and he didn't make the purge, but he was a good kid to build. Uh, Travis, did anything stick with you? Um, you know, I, I don't know. The builds all kind of blend. Um, I think the, the Crossbones Gundam, mainly because that's the only one's name I can remember. Uh, <laughs> like the the full cloth, but no, I just, uh, it's just such a goofy, I mean, he's got like a skull fist thing that goes over his hand and like three different swords and a flintlock pistol and <laughs> skull shoulder pads and a cape and it's just ridiculous, but uh, that one, that one took a lot of time, that was fun, uh, but if I, I was going, the one I have probably most prominently displayed, I don't even know what it's called, it's from Virtual On, which is a game, I, I guess. Yeah. But it's a blue and gray robot, and he's got, like, a mounty hat. But he has a hand <laughs> that points a finger and another one that gives a thumbs up. And I just think that's hilarious. I love that thing. The stupid-looking robot with a hat. Um, so, yeah. Because that's what a robot needs in space. A hat and a thumbs up. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, thumbs up, I get, you know. Yeah, it's like thumbs up. <laughs> But the hat's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, I've got him. Uh, he's actually uh, standing next to the uh, the Lego build of the old moderately geeky crew in studio. Nice. And give him a, a thumbs up next to a Guillermo del Toro Funko Pop. So <laughs> that's that's what I have on my wall behind my work desk. I like it. I like it. So, someday we'll get a shot of that. You know, uh, one of the ones that really stuck out for me, j just because it was the first real grade I had that had the uh, core fighter in it. I was just uh, so impressed that they were able to get uh, these little details in it. I got the uh, full burning uh, real oh, grade yeah. um, just because he had those big hoopty uh, things on his backpack and he was just a fun build. Uh, as an older real grade, I, I, I know they're a little sensitive in terms of uh, being touched or being looked at or anything without falling apart. But I, I never really had issues with it. Uh, I dug the whole, um, just the miniature core fighter snapping in and, you know, build it on to at a, such a small scale. And there was such detail in it. I just enjoyed it. And that, and I love the core fighter too. The core fighter is I, I think that's kind of endemic to a lot of the real grades of them just being finicky about being touched because the, I've had some a couple problems with the, with the Sazabi with parts staying on it if you move it around too much. Yeah. Plus, it, it really needs to stand. It's too heavy for its own joints. Um, and the Sedanju, I, I, it was a great to build, but it needs super glue in a lot of places. So, uh, so flip side, are there any horror story builds uh, that you've had <laughs> that you just could not stand? Um, Travis, you laughed. Yeah. You start. Well, I, I said I'm not beholden to, to Gundam necessarily. I just like any any big Japanese robot I can get. So I, I did a few of the Frames Arms, or Frame Arms series type yeah. stuff. And I've got one I just love. He's like this deep sea dive green, just cool looking robot. But there are a couple others. I don't know if they're particularly Frame Arm, but they were the same 
style. Um, I, I, it's terrible because I don't remember. I think it was called like Border Break or something like that. Okay. Uh, the series, and there was this yellow one on roller skates, which I thought was ridiculous. <laughs> so I, thought, I get that, but oh man, from building it to when it was done, nothing would stay together. It just fell apart. Everything just dropped off, and uh, it, it probably could be remedied with glue, but what's the point in gluing in replaceable parts type of things? So, right. Um, yeah, that one was just um, the one thing I, I have come to really appreciate appreciate about the Gundam uh, as a line is, yeah, it's a lot of the same type of build over and over and over, but man, they've got the snap kit down to a science, man. Right. Things fit for the most part. They, yeah. uh, the joints work, things stay on. Yeah. Things fall off once in a while and it can be a little finicky, but compared to some of the other plastic kits out there, man, the, the tolerances and stuff are really, really good. And but, in fairness, what they try to do at the scale yeah. they do it at is pretty amazing. Uh, Jason, did you have any uh, horror stories or any build that you just hated? So I built two of the Mark II Titan Gundams. Uh, I planned on getting the third AG kit, which ended up being you know the hero Gundam in, in the series. But after building two of them, if I build that kit again, uh, it'll be too soon, ever. <laughs> <laughs> once was enough. Uh, once was really fun. Second, it was just there's still something about it. it was just too many times. It, it became not a fun kit the second go around. And it's one of my favorite designs in all of Gundam because uh, it looks like a walking tank. But, um, yeah, I don't think I'll be building that third one. Uh, John, you got any horror stories? Oh, yeah. The uh, real grade Destiny Gundam. Really? The wings on that thing are an absolute nightmare. Um, just trying to put them together. It took me weeks to do it just because I didn't want to anymore. Right. Between the monotony of doing the same thing over and over and then the parts being so thin and then just trying to apply the decals to it. Yeah. The whole process pretty much made me stop building for about two months afterward. <laughs> Um, for me, it was a real grade as well as I was building the uh, real grade, uh, Zeta. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think it's just a matter of them trying to do too much with the scale that it was in. Um, I mean, real grades have really small finicky parts to begin with. And the Zeta has a transformation. And I think that just kind of overcomplicates the build in general. Um, but that thing... I couldn't even look at it without it crumbling. And I, I love the real grade as a, uh, as a platform of the, you know, the grades, uh, even as finicky as, you know, some of these are like you were mentioning, but man, that Zeta, I hate that thing. <laughs> Just sad because the tune was really, really good. So um, now I, I don't know. You may know, John, but um, is the Zeta in the, like the double Z, is that the same, in the same kind of universe kind of a thing? Well, I mean, they're both part of Universal Century. Yeah. Same as okay. the original Gundam. Okay. So the reason why I say is because I just purchased the, um, the Faz, which is full armor ZZ, mm -hmm. um, the version Ka. So I, I don't know what I'm in for for that, but it looks like it's, it looks like it's going to be a uh, good long build. Um, so with that, I mean, do you guys prefer, you know, the quick builds where you can get done and move on to the next thing? Or do you like these builds that take a while? That's sometimes a little bit more finicky, sometimes more detailed. Um, uh, John, what do you, what do you, what do you prefer on that? For me, it depends on the suit. Um, if it's one of the suits that's more realistic, you know, something from Universal Century, I mean, even something from Gundam Wing where things are a little more down to earth, then I prefer to have thing kits like Master Grade or Real Grade where I can enjoy all those details, have a longer build. But then you have things like Gundam Build Fighters where most of the time I'd rather have a high grade because you just want to have representations of those suits on your shelf and in a way that you can actually pick them up, move them around, pose them. 
put them together as teams in some cases. It's just more fun to do it that way. So it really just depends on, you know, what series it comes from and what kit it is or what suit it is rather. Uh, Jason, we were uh, talking over the weekend and you just recently built the uh, uh, red frame real grade. Mm -hmm. You're, you're working on uh, um, the Zaku now. You kind of mentioned how uh, you didn't like that. It was a pretty quick build in terms of a real grade. So, uh, yeah, so there were a three dollar difference between the two, and for what I felt, I got plastic wise and time wise and everything else. Like the quality is good. Don't get me wrong. Like it's a pretty cool little build, but it's mostly just a frame with a few pieces of armor on it. And with the real grade, the the frames. I don't know. Here's the frame. They already come pretty much assembled because of the tolerances and everything else. So just getting a red frame and slapping a few pieces of white armor on it was for the same price as, as you see all this plastic here was kind of um, a little disappointing. Like at $20. Yeah. I think this would be a good kit at $30, which was the same price as I paid for the Zaku. Uh, not so much. I mean, he's going wrong. He looks really neat, but as far as build wise, I like my builds to be complicated. I like to see the engineering behind them. I think it's one reason why I kind of avoid a lot of the high grades because a lot of times the, the articulation points are just rubber or plastic sockets. And I like something where there's a lot of plastic, like you pretty much got to build each joint. Right. I like to sit down and spend about an hour on a leg or an arm or something while I watch TV. I want it to kind of be a little bit of a slow burn, but I don't want a monotony like John was talking about with the wings and the destiny. I think. I built a HG new Gundam or Gundam new and doing the funnels was just after like the fourth one, I want to throw a thing in the trash. I think that one was really, really <laughs> just doing the same part over and over and over and over and over really gets pulled fast. So one of the other kits that I'm working on is a perfect grade uh, strike freedom. And if you don't know, uh, the backpack on that thing is monstrous, and it comes with what's called dragoons. Uh, basically, it's little bits of his backpack that can kind of spring off, uh, literally in this case, um, and kind of shoot uh, as well. Um, I, I spent six and a half hours uh, a couple weeks ago, and all I got was a third of the backpack done. And I mean, you want to talk about tedious, you want to talk about repetitive, dude, that in spades. Um, it, it, was, it was fun to put it together. It was interesting to see the engineering of it. But my God, afterwards, I just felt like I wasted a day with nothing really to show for it. Um, it, it was just a monstrous, uh, monstrous build. So then Friday, I spent another four and a half hours and I finally completed the backpack of the perfect grade uh, strike freedom. So I, that was exhausting and, you know, frustrating at times too. Um, I've not done a perfect grade. I, I've considered grabbing the, um, the unicorn yeah. and the light, the LED light kit, because I mean, it ends up becoming like a really cool display piece. But the problem is, is um, I'm in the process of, getting a new home and I've deliberately had my home to where I don't have any places to do, to store and display a lot of that kind of stuff because I ended up with a house full of it at one point in time before I had kids and now it's just turned into a, a perpetual nightmare so I too I'm kind of on the fence I'm like I, I don't know if I want to spend that much money quite yet on one and I want it for the build of it but at the same time like after I build it where I'm going to put it <laughs> right so to spend that much money on a display piece that you're not going to display, I'm kind of between that, but I want to build it just for like the coolness of building it, putting in the light kit, and being able to flip that switch first time and go amazing. So, right. Uh, Travis, do you have a preference between the two? Is it just one of those things where you just want to see the damn thing at the end because that's what you bought it for? Or? Uh, you know, it really depends. I, I do enjoy the complexity, um, just on everything. I like complex lego builds i like complex transformers that transform i like i do like complex gundam my problem with the, the complex gundam is it it literally could take me a year to finish it when i can only work on it 15 minutes 
maybe once or twice a week, you know, other than things are a, a little different now. My kids are a little older, so it's not quite so much hands on all the time. And I, I have a little more free time, but um, there is something, you know, to the, to having something that's very complex that you can get done with and say, man, I did that. Um, now saying that I've got a shelf of probably about 10 Gundams that, I haven't painted or weathered or sealed or applied decals or anything to because I got the build done. It's like, okay, I'm done with that. I want to get to the next one now. Right. Uh, so it's, it, it's back and forth. And I say that as I'm building a glorified SD uh, kit here with uh, Sergeant Fro. Um, yeah. I, I, I do like uh, the compl- the more complex uh, builds. All right. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the painting and all that. Uh, so how much extra work do you do on your builds? Uh, do you do the painting? Do you do the priming? Do you do the top coats? Uh, do you sand your parts before you put the, put them together? Uh, Jason, what do you do? Um, I don't paint anymore. I used to do some war gaming and that miniature painting. And uh, back in the day, I did a lot of model kits. So all, all those were painted. I like that these all come pre-color. Yeah. Um, I don't have to paint. Every now and then I look at a kit and I'm like, you know, it'd be really nice to go through and like paint it and, you know, do some uh, panel lining and do all kind of weather techniques that I know how to use that I learned over years of doing miniatures. But then I have flashbacks of painting like Hunter Man miniature armies. And, <laughs> uh, I don't have that kind of time anymore. Like, like I said, I can sit down, watch, come home from work and once the kids are in bed or whatever, I'll sit down and watch an hour of TV and do a part, but to uh, sit there and spend the time painting, it's just not in me anymore. Uh, John, what about you? For me, I do some panel lining, but I haven't done any full-on paints except for one custom that I made for somebody. Um, I don't really even do top coats. I wish I did. I wish I wasn't so lazy that I didn't do it. But decals and panel lighting is pretty much where I draw the line. Yeah, By the time I, I get that I done, I want to go to the next thing and build something instead of painting it. Right. Uh, so you mentioned panel lining. How do you panel line? Do you use uh, one of the small uh, ink markers? Do you use an uh, ink brush? What do, you, what do you use? Almost always Gundam markers yeah. because it's just easy and I'm kind of lazy. So yeah. markers is where it's at. Yeah, for real. Uh, Travis, what about you? Uh, I, I enjoy the painting and weathering. I, I can't say that I've done a whole lot of it over the last few years, but, um, you know, the most recent kits I did was the sand rock and the, uh, is it Death Scythe or Hell Scythe or whatever the one, the big Grim Reaper looking one from Wing is. It's uh, Death and he actually had Death Scythe Hell, which was the thing that it turned okay. to lighter. That's where you're getting the hell from. There you go. Um, so I did, and I, I enjoy it, and I've, a lot of the custom painting that I've done on action figures, it's mostly stuff I learned doing on Gundam, um, and so I played, I know when I did the Sand Rock, I was really experimenting with washes at that point and making my own washes using uh, uh, floor polish and uh, alcohol and different uh, pigments, and so I, I got to experiment a lot with that, and so I... I really enjoy that aspect of building because uh, to me that the, the customizing, the building, all that, it's kind of interlinked together a little bit. Um, and so I, I enjoy it. I don't do as much as I'd like to, um, but I like to panel line and then I don't go full primer and, and all that. I'll, I'll try to go off the base colors and tweak off of that. And then a lot of washes is what I've, I've gotten into. I think the, uh, the washes and top coats are really what can make it, it, it pop out quite a bit. And I loathe uh, stickers, and so I don't want to use <laughs> yeah. that. I'd rather use paint. So, um, yeah. you know, that's kind of where I am on that. Um, so as I'm working here, I, I, I noticed that I, I've got a few little crazy nuances that I do when I build, when I set up. Um, I, I don't know if any of that applies to you. Like, Like for me – what I do is I stack out all of my plates in alphabetical order. Um, and as I'm building, I, I willfully miss the head. Like I, I will ignore the head until the last 
Uh, last thing, because for me, the head is basically the dessert of the build. And I know if I build uh, the robot complete, and yet there's a bunch of like backpack stuff or guns and stuff, by that time, I'm probably going to be mentally bored of the build. So I'll just move on. So that's, that's one of the reasons why I wait until the end to build the head. Uh, do any of you guys have any weird little things like that or routines in terms of your builds? No, you're a psychopath. Well, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you saw me send it out in alphabetical order when we were first starting. At first, I'd open them as they were, and I quickly sorted them in alphabetical order. But yeah, I if if the head is at any point in the beginning or middle, it will get moved to the end. And I mean, it's like Jason, it is the dessert of the build. It's like the end point. It's usually when you look at a kit, it's kind of you're naturally drawn to that point. I think the few times I have done any paint or anything, I've, you know, space, pay special attention to a head. Because there's been times I've painted the eyes because so I thought the paint would look better than the stickers they gave you. And kind of going back to that whole sticker thing. Uh, it depends on the kit. Like this one doesn't have very many stickers. It'll probably get most of them. I was doing some earlier, especially the foils. Um, and there's some kits where I painted the, the metallic parts. So just quick, I mean, it's just a quick dot and then, fine tip brush and you're done it just depends but yeah i the head's the last john do you have any weird little things that you do when you build or you just yeah. go with the flow well it's a mix really um i don't put anything in alphabetical order or anything like that normally i just take all of the plates put them in one side of the box for the kit and then pull out i can actually if you want, I can pick up my iPad here and show you what I'm doing over here on the side. Um, I just take the plate and then set down everything as I cut it out. And that okay. way I stick the plate off into the other side of the box, know that I'm done with it and move on. But I don't build them in any particular order. I just usually go from page one to whatever the last page is and just go with whatever they wanted me to go with. All right on. Um, for anybody that's listening that may be interested or may, or just don't, doesn't understand enough about the hobby to kind of jump in, where, where do you guys think is a good safe point to start? Or if they're interested, where, what kind of build should they go with first? What, what do you think they would enjoy and really get the most out of? Uh, Travis? I you got to start with just something that interests you. I think you know, pick a uh, if you you're a fan of a show, find a, a suit from that that you like, or um, you know, just something that catches your eye or that you'd like, and and start with an HG. You know, that I, I wouldn't jump full bore into certainly not perfect grade, not a real grade. Uh, some of the MGs aren't bad depending on what you get, but. You know, uh, you have a low investment in a high grade, and um, I think you just you find something you like and see if it clicks for you. I mean, that's how I got started. I think that's probably how most of you guys got started, and you just kind of right. went from there, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, John, do you have any thoughts on that? or? Well, pretty much just echo his thoughts on it. Um, anybody that's asked me where to start, I just tell them, go to Amazon, look around, pick a high-grade kit that looks cool to you, make sure it's not one of the really early ones because they're usually not very good builds. Right. And just go for it. Yeah. Um, I was having a discussion with a, a guy that was supposed to be on and I, he couldn't make it unfortunately. And he, he was always thought to uh, steer away from the high grades because of those early high grade builds where they were pretty chintzy, um, very basic, very boring. And uh, I was like, listen, dude, uh, in the past couple of years, some of these high grades are just oh. flat amazing. Just yeah. amazing. And for the cost that you're putting into it, and especially if you don't know a whole lot about what you're doing, I mean, you, you really cannot beat uh, the value of a high grade. What are those high grade Thunderbolt kits? They, they look cool. Oh, man. I, I've got a couple of them. The uh, full armor Gundam uh, high grade. Uh, that'll have you building for a while, and for you know, for a high grade, that's that's pretty awesome. They got a couple of in there. They got one with a giant sniper cannon that just yep, 
<laughs> it's like when you set up on an asteroid and just spin in space and wait from, you know, half the solar system away with it. So Right. But it's, it's so big and absurd, it looks really cool. So, and that, that's the thing with uh, Gundam. If, if there's anybody that can overcompensate more than uh, Gundam with their weapon, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know who it is. Um, but I, if Thunderbolt High Grade uh, is an amazing build, you're going to get a lot of plastic to deal with. And at the end, it's going to look pretty cool. Um, See but, recently priced, too, for what they are. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, I feel anyway. And um, So, you know, if, if you don't know anything about Gundam itself, and if you have a streaming account, if you have um, Hulu or if you have Netflix, there's, uh, there's a couple streaming uh, on Netflix. I think uh, Iron-Blooded Orphans and Unicorn is streaming on Netflix. Um, you know, if you're interested in the story, awesome. But just look at the design of the robots in those lines and the suits in those lines. They're just amazing. Um, and with Hulu, before got, you let your kids watch it, that's all. Yeah, just... for sure. Uh, yeah, for some of those, definitely. Um, you heard the theme song, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we'll sign off with Travis singing it for us. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I mean, if if you're interested in it, and there's also some websites out there that stream uh, the Gundam series. You know, it, they dub it, um, and you can watch it for free if you find the right sites. Um, well, probably the easiest way to watch a lot of it right now is uh, Bandai has their own YouTube channel, Gundam Info. Right. Right. And they yep. Quite a bit of it, the dubs and the subs. So that would probably be the best way to go because you'd have a variety of things to choose from, That's and it's true. all good, so you don't have to worry about piracy. Right. So and there's uh, I mean if and if you can't find it on the Gundam Info, there's other <clears throat> uh, YouTubers that have uh, like they have the Gundam Seed dubbed on YouTube. Uh, one guy does has most of the series anyway. Um, so there's avenues where you can watch it. And like I said, uh, the stories, I mean, you can be in as invested as you'd like, but it's really about the uh, suits. It's about the uh, designs. Got a helper. <laughs> so uh, John, how old are your kids? My kids are eight and 10. Okay. Um, uh, Travis, did any of your boys interested? Are they interested in this at all? No. Uh, no. 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 Uh, they've done a couple. Um, actually, uh, my eldest, uh, who's 11, he did one of the 30 minute builds yeah. uh, kits here not too long. He really liked it. Uh, unfortunately, our hobby shop up in Des Moines that we, we stop in now and then, uh, you know, it's it's been kind of defunct now since. Uh, uh, COVID hit, but um, I actually got my nephew into it, weirdly, and, you know, we were talking about the real grades and how finicky they are. I, I started on some high grades, and he was really digging it and liking it. I got him a real grade, and I think I broke him with the Gundam habit with that <laughs> one. So I should have went with the master grade instead of the real grade, but... Right. Uh, <laughs> He was like, I don't know, Unc, this is, this is a little... <laughs> so much? <laughs> yeah. But he was, I don't know, there's a few Christmases, and I, I most Christmases, I'll still get him a kit. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, he got into it. My youngest, uh, I, as I'm sitting here putting together the Sergeant Frog ones, like, I bet he could do one of these now, and he'd probably really like it. He is very detail-oriented, and um, he's really into Lego right now, so this might be something right up his alley that... Uh, uh, if I slow down and, and save a couple of these kits for them, they might uh, really get a kick out of it. Um, but, yeah, uh, my oldest, a little bit off and on, um, not necessarily just Gundam. I, I had them uh, building a couple other models, uh, but my nephew was the main one that uh, I got into it, outside of you, Jay. Right. <laughs> uh, John, what about you? Are your kids interested in it at all? My son's not interested in it at all, but I watched uh, Gundam 
Build Fighters and Build Fighters Try with my daughter when she was really little. Of course, I say really little as like five years ago at this point, but she got interested in it. And when she was about five, I got her a few of the Petite Bear Guy kits. Yeah. Mm. Even a five-year-old can put those things together. Right. And she's got a whole shelf of them in her room. Nice. So she's done some SD kits and quite a few of the Bear Guy kits, but anything above that, the first high grade kit I tried to get her to do pretty much made her not want to put them together anymore. So <laughs> now are you getting her the uh, Hello Kitty uh, uh, RX 78? Probably. Uh, SD? She's not really that big into Hello Kitty, so I'm not worried. Oh, okay. Uh, Jason, what about you? Are, are your kids into it at all? Uh, my daughter, uh, she watched me build them and she wanted to do one. So I got the, I got an HG, I got the purple TriStar kit. She liked it because it was purple. So I got her that and we sat down and did it. And, um, that cured of it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so my, uh. Uh, my oldest, he he's only passively interested in it. Like he likes the designs of the SDs just because they're kind of silly looking. Uh, mm-hmm. So he's amused by that. Um, but otherwise, he's not really interested in the whole uh, robot fighting thing at all. I I, I don't know. Uh, he must have got it from his mom's side or something. I don't know. So is he communist? What? <laughs> um, but my uh, my youngest. He he enjoys it. Uh, he he was building them pretty frequently, and then he had a couple bad experiences with a couple different uh, unicorn builds, and he, he just got upset and frustrated with it with the uh, build of it all. So he he backed off. Um, now that I'm building again, he was like, you know what? I want to build a model or two again. So he's picked that up. Um, so he he's been working on that. He just built a um uh, um uh a kit from Origin today. So he just finished that today. So pretty uh pretty excited to get back at it, I think. Um and um my wife actually, she loves the uh the bear guys as well. She's she's got a couple. She's got the one that has the uh little baby in the backpack. Mhm. Um mm-hmm. she loves that one. And uh so yeah, so we're uh, at least everybody in the family has built at least one. Um but uh yeah, it, it, I wouldn't say it's a uh, it's a family affair kind of a thing, but we all kind of understand it and my wife kind of digs the engineering of it as well. That's good. So um she hates seeing those boxes come in though. <laughs> <laughs> Just a reminder, at least it's not G.I. Joe. <laughs> yeah, it can always go on in that rabbit hole again. <laughs> so, well, what is the uh, the biggest kit that you've purchased in terms of either money, size? Uh, John, what about you? Uh, probably, probably money-wise and size-wise, it's one of the three P-Bandai kits that I picked up for Gundam Wing and the Spaltz. I picked up the um, Nataku, the Sand Rock, and the Heavy Arms all pretty much within a couple of years of each other when they were releasing. Yeah. I mean, most Master Grades are about the same size unless it's something crazy. But I haven't done a perfect grade or anything like that. Uh, Jason, what about you? Uh, remember the Snazu Stein being pretty uh, pricey kit? Um I think it was one of the bigger builds I had done. I did yeah, it was around. Stein, I did the, the MG Stein and I did the MG San Andrew. So I did both versions of it. And they were both um, pretty big, pretty complex, pretty expensive. I would say if you're going to get an MG, you, you need to look at like, go read some reviews. You know, first, yeah. if you're getting your feet wet, uh, like everybody else said, start with an HG, find something that just looks cool. And then go do some reviews. Find out. I mean, there's a lot of people that have reviewed these and can tell you, hey, this is, you know, worth your time sitting down with. This isn't. Um, some will tell you what the problems are with the build. And some will tell you, you know, what you might like and not like. And you kind of gauge it from that. 
Um, so you can cut when you see these reviews, you see how much plastic you're getting in the kit and you kind of see, you know, whether that plastic is worth putting together and spend your money on. So, uh, but yeah, that's kind of, those are the Travis, more expensive kits I've done. Yeah. Travis, what's the uh, worst sale that you've got? Cause you don't buy I, anything at full price. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, I'm honestly trying to sit here and think if there's one that I've, I've paid full price for, um, <laughs> I, I can't swear completely, not, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. It was probably the cross, but I ended up paying about 35 bucks for that one, um, which isn't terrible for a master grade. Master right. grade. Um, but yeah, I was big into the, if it looks cool and it's cheap, I'll just throw it all together. Now, um, I was a big volume buyer while the individual kits were, were, weren't much, but I would buy you know, $200 worth of kits from HLJ and get this massive box in with 10 kits and other stuff in there. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, pr the crossbones would probably be the, the most I spent on one. Well, I take maybe the frame arms kit that one frame arms. I might've gone in the mid forties on that one. Yeah. So I, I bought, um, the strike, perfect grade a few years ago and it, it took me a while to get that together but um i recently bought uh, the perfect grade and I, I think or the perfect strike rather perfect grade so that's probably my big spend um i, I don't remember which was more expensive that one or the uh strike freedom perfect grade um but in size wise the strike freedom is a monster that backpack is just unreal um and I, I knew what I was getting into because I, like you were saying, Jason, uh, I paid attention to the reviews. And I was kind of wanting to know what I was getting into with that. Yeah. And uh, but man, oh man, I to spend ten hours ish on a backpack just to complete it <laughs> <laughs> is a bit ridiculous. Um. So yeah, I haven't even built the suit portion yet, just because I heard that the uh the backpack was a monster and i just wanted to get that done because i was just afraid that i was going to get sick of it by the time i get to it so that's done i built the weapons for it uh now i just got to build the suit so so now it's just kind of gravy on that one so i usually wait to, actually you know we're saying what do you do like order um i won't touch a weapon until i have the main suit body backpack and all done then i'll tinker on because the weapons usually for the most part are like two pieces of plastic maybe six at the most that you just kind of slap them together so yeah so this uh version call uh faz or f-a-z-z -Z, whatever you want to call it um this thing has a monster of a gun and i i seriously think like half the build is going to be this gun that hooks up to his back so that's going to that's going to be a while um to build that so um we're closing in on an hour and i i didn't want to take up uh all these guys time uh this evening um i don't know if they they've got to finish up their mother's day stuff today or not um but i want to thank you guys for coming on and uh just uh spending time building some uh, uh gundam with us um I one of the local hobby stores here in town. They like to do this every month. They do a, a social build with all with the uh, pandemic going on. Obviously, that's not a thing right now. So I, I wanted to try it with uh, John. I knew you built Gundams, and uh, we talked over the years. So it's kind of nice to get you on to talk. Um, and Jason, Travis, you're kind of stuck here. So sorry about your luck. <laughs> So, um, but before we, uh, we kind of end things, uh, John, is there any, uh, any suits out there that, uh, you're any model kits that you've kind of got your eye on before you, uh, uh, maybe your next purchase? Probably my next purchase is going to be this one of the main suits from Build Divers Re-Rise. I don't know which one yet, but one of those. Nice. Or if I can get a hold of it, the Master Grade Barbados, because it just looks amazing. Yeah. 
Uh, Travis, uh, anything catching your eye, or are you just kind of going with the flow until the next sale? Uh, yeah, pretty much. But um, I did, <laughs> you know, I bought the uh, that Bumblebee, the uh, Flame, Flame Toys Furi model kit, the Bumblebee, and I, I re was really impressed with it. I, I had to, of course, wait for it to go on sale. So, <laughs> uh, But I am very interested because it, it, it's actually a very large kit. It scales uh, really well with uh, Masterpiece scale toys so i'm really curious on the seekers uh from that line so I've, I've been trying to watch for them to dip in price a little bit and maybe uh get a shot on those and and see how they look compared uh to the bumblebee so i i saw there was a kit for drift out is that yeah the same line or is that something different it is um that one's a little more expensive so that and that's a newer one they do have a bigger series um in that line and i think it's like megatron and maybe star saver or something like that and they're like north of a hundred dollar kits oh dang um i want to say like really expensive i'd have to go back and look that up uh but um yeah there is a drift so that that is definitely one that's kind of in my uh, uh view also but i think it'll be a while before i can find that one uh down under 30 anyways but right yeah uh, Jason, what about you? Anything, uh, anything you're looking at right now? No, because I usually don't buy until I'm ready to build, and then I kind of see what's available, and I go from there. I mean, I have some kits on my short list, but nothing. I'm gonna go out tomorrow and probably buy. In fact, this will probably be my last one for a couple months. I build. Um, I've got some. I've got some kids coming in on Tuesday, so you got more coming. <laughs> yes, shut up. <laughs> I think you okay, you want to get more on there? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, beyond that, I I don't know. I I have a small list of what I want. I I figure if I have just a list that I can kind of control what I get and not get too crazy with my purchases so everything i've bought so far has been on my list so i haven't deviated from that so so one could argue that the list is making you purchase more than you normally would uh no not really it's it's actually controlled like before <laughs> I, I i knew what if i was this is controlled what is uncontrolled how many kids have you, you bought? not remember how i buy <laughs> yep we you remember feet head in <laughs> So, but yeah, I've got some master grades coming and uh, a few uh, high grades. So that'll scratch that itch for a while. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and close up, I think, for the, uh, for the hour here. Uh, John, I appreciate you coming on, hanging out with us. Hope you had a good time. Um, yeah. Thanks and, for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, thank your wife for letting you come and play with us as well. So, happy Mother's Day to her. Um, uh, Travis, you got anything before we uh, sign out? Do you want to do uh, questions or anything? We good. Oh, yeah, we can do. Why don't, I guess, uh, why don't we go ahead and do, uh, you know, what didn't suck this week? I know it's only been a few days since we recorded last time, but uh, uh, Jason, give me something that hasn't sucked for you for the last couple of days. I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing, but I discovered Sea of Thieves is really fun on Xbox Live. That could be a bad thing, so that could suck later on when I've, you know, wasted hours and hours and hours for the same at the moment. It didn't suck. There you go. Jay, how about you? Something that didn't suck. Um, something that didn't suck. I don't know. We had a, a good Mother's Day. We had a good uh, Mother's Day weekend for Mo, so I, I think she was pretty happy. She wasn't at least mad at me, so there, there's a plus there. <laughs> they ain't over yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, John, uh, we kind of do a tradition to, at the end of the show, uh, trying to say something that doesn't suck in this time of things being very sucky. So uh, is there something recently that uh, has brought a smile to your face? Yeah. Um, lately, I've been playing an MMO with my wife, Final Fantasy fourteen, and we got into the most recent expansion pack, and it's been really great. It has not sucked at all. <laughs> so. Awesome. Uh, 
You know, for me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say tonight, just uh, building. I haven't built a model kit. Well, I take it back. I did the Bumblebee, but uh, opening some of these kits I've had sitting on my shelf for years at this point, and uh, as a whole, getting back into customizing a little bit now that there's a, a little bit more time on my hand. It's 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 been fun. It's been therapeutic. Um, I I strongly suggest if anyone's just going stir crazy at home, find some kind of creative outlet, whatever it might be, whether it's uh, maybe Gundam and model building, maybe it's, it's, it's toys of some kind, maybe it's uh, crochet or macrame, I don't know what it might be, but uh, there's something intensely satisfying of, of working with your hands and, and, and having a finished product when you're done. It's, it's very, uh, it, it's good for the soul if I can uh, channel a little bit of Gundam lyrics or something here. But uh, <laughs> that didn't suck. Uh, so, Jay, close us out. All right. Uh, we appreciate you uh, coming to check us out. Uh, and, John, thank you for visiting with us. Uh, if you are working on any Gundam uh, builds, let us know in the comments. Uh, if you're interested to come on, maybe we can do this uh, more routinely. Every once in a while, have a, a little group build. Um, sounds like fun. We had a good time tonight. And... Uh, uh, hope to um, share the experience with some of you. So uh, thanks again for listening to Social Geekery, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Stay safe.